there was a time and there's no time now. But time is there, right? Okay. So, so uh, don't don't trust this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so mute, unmute. Please. And now I'm. Okay, so I guess we start. Okay, hello. I guess we start. So, my name is uh, Yuri Olsha. I work for Red Hat, and this presentation will be actually two, uh, two presentations. First, I will start and talk something about uh, perf scripts, and Arnold will continue with uh, tracing and probing. So, uh, my presentation is about how you can use uh, various scripting language uh, within the perf, uh, what parts of the perf actually uh, uh, use in some way uh, the scripting. Uh, basically, there are, two, there are two distinct areas in perf that you can use script. Uh, first one is that perfs allow you uh, to be used actually in the native Python scripts. So this will be the first part. And the other part is uh, we allow user to post-process script, uh, post-process the output of uh, whatever we have, the output like from perf record or perf stuff. And I will talk about this. I will start uh, with the basics. So for you who is not, for those of you who are not familiar with perf, perf is basically a measuring and profiling tool. It has kind of two distinct modes uh, it operates on. Uh, first one is the counting mode, and it allows you to uh, get the total overview of your workload, like to measure uh, whatever event you want, and to measure it for, let's say, uh, for various targets. In this example, it's the workload is the task. This task gets scheduled over several CPUs. And what you will get as the output of the perf stat is the total number for this whole workload. So in this, uh, in this example, we measure cycles and instructions, and you will see at the end how many cycles and instructions uh, your workload actually spent. So this is one mode. The other mode is uh, actual profiling, uh, meaning that uh, you can run your workload in a profiling mode, and the kernel, the system, uh, will make sure that your workload uh, gets, it will get periodically interrupted. And at each such interruption, uh, we will store some data that will kind of describe this interaction, interruption point. It will say, uh, well, what CPU it was, uh, what process ID, we can store other various data. So. At the end of the measuring, uh, the perf record will store all the data to the data file and you post-process. We actually take this data and uh, we have other tools to display this data uh, for, for a user. So these are kind of uh, two basic modes that perfs operate on, perf stat for the measuring and perf record for the profiling. To be even more on the lower layer, because later on I will be discussing how you can use perf in Python scripts. I will describe the actual interface that we have uh, with the kernel. So as for the counting, uh, what the perf stat actually do, does, it uh, uses the perf event open syscall. It will use it to create the event and to attach uh, to some target. The target is basically the thing that you want to measure. So it can be CPU, it can be process, it can be even a C group. And once your workload is done, uh, or it doesn't need to be at the time the workload is done, but anytime you feel like you want to read the data out of the event, 
you use the read syscall and the file descriptor that you will get from the perf event uh, syscall. So it is as easy as this, just uh, open the event and read the data whenever you want the data. For, so this is for measuring, uh, for the counting mode. For the profiling, it's slightly uh, more interesting. Uh, it uses the same syscall to create the event, but as I said, uh, we are actually getting the samples from the data. Uh, from the kernel. So we need some way to actually uh, pass the data from the kernel uh, to the user space, and we use uh, the MAP syscall for that. So the perf record will actually issue this MAP syscall, and it will create a memory buffer through the user and kernel space. So whenever there is a sample of the event in the kernel, uh, it will get stored in this memory buffer, and the perf record will, well, it basically iterates the memory buffers it creates and stores the data to the perf data uh, file. So this is like the basic workload, the basic interface workload uh, for perf for both of the modes. It's really not that, uh, uh, it's not that, it's kind of basic interface with the syscalls. Okay, so this was this was an interface in a nutshell. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, in the perf we support two ways. Well, there are two eras of uh, scripting support. First is to use, uh, like, to provide a layer uh, in the Python to actually be able to use Python object in the perf, and the other one is post-processing the data from the profiling or from the perfstat command. So I will start how to actually use perf in the Python script. It is as easy as uh, importing the perf module. So we, as the perf source, we provide uh, the perf module for the Python. And you can think about the Python module as something which is related to this picture, the pictures of the interface. And if you erase the left part and replace it with Python script, the perf module is basically the Python extension uh, that communicates that communicates through the syscall with the kernel and somehow encapsulate this interface in the matter of some Python Python object. So you can actually say import perf in the Python script and start using the Python. Uh, start using the perf object in the Python. Uh, the Python uh, the Python extension for the perf comes in the package which is called Python dash perf. I'm aware about only only about the Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Fedora, and I know that this this package is actually there. I'm not sure about the other distros. How does this Python uh, interface actually look like? At the moment, we provide only the sampling interface. That means that in Python script, you can do uh, the thing that perf record do, the actual profiling. And it is as simple as uh, we just export several, several objects uh, for, uh, for the Python script to use. And to see how they work, I have a just very simple example. So at the beginning, you need to be aware or you need to tell what are you going to measure. We have two objects for that. You define either the CPU map or thread map, and you actually, this way you define your target. So whatever you want to profile, you specify in constructors of those objects. The other object, FCL, basically lets you to specify what event are you interested in. So again, you create the object and in the constructor you say, well, you specify all the, all the attributes of the event that you are interested in. Uh, to actually get uh, the meaning of the attributes or get the list of whatever uh, you want to specify, there's a very nice description in the main page of perf event open syscall. So whatever is there, you can, you can specify in here. So you create the event and you call the open method on the event uh, with the target. And what it does, it will actually execute the perf event 
syscall and create the event for you. Like it will treat the file descriptor at the event as an encapsulation of this Epsilon object. I said that at the moment we support the sampling in, uh, interface, so we have a way to actually map the event to the memory. And for this, you need to add event to event list and call a memory map function. So this will create the memory, a memory buffer between kernel and user space. And you can use uh, this kind of cycle, this kind of iteration to actually read the data. And well, yeah, the, the read on CPU method will get you back the event object. And you can do whatever you want to. This example just print it out. OK, so it is as easy as this. It's actually a very easy interface. Uh, I mentioned uh, it's just sampling, so we would like to have more. We would like to have content interface, and we would like to have more people involved. It is it's reside in this uh, source. OK, so this was uh, the one part, uh, which is using perf in the Python. The other part is post-processing the data, so whatever perf makes. Uh, we'd like to actually post-process it and display it to the user. Why would we actually want to do this if we have a perf report? Uh, for you that who don't know what's perf report, it's actually a tool that takes the data out of the, uh, out of the perf data file. And for each sample, it will actually sort the sample. And based on some criteria, sorting criteria, it will put uh, matching samples to buckets and display the overhead, which is, which is nice and which is okay for most of the users. But if you want something special, some customized sort, some, something that's not, uh, not in general for other users, we have support for this as well. We have Perscript Wrapper, which actually allows you uh, to run Python or Perscript over the perf data. How? Oh. It actually works in the same way, to some extent, as, per, as perf report. Uh, it reads the data file, takes each and every sample, and calls the callbacks in your Python or per script. So in this, uh, the only thing you need is to provide a script which defines this kind of callbacks. And then you can do whatever you want uh, with the data. It will actually, it will, uh, it will get, it will pass you all the data which are attached uh, to whatever sample. So to be more precise, on the interface, we have trace begin, trace end functions. So if you define those in, the, in your script, they will be called before and after the data are processed. For everything which is not trace point, the process event function will be called. So if you have like hardware events, software events, uh, other kinds of events, but not trace points. This will be the uh, this will be the function that will be called for trace point. Uh, the name of the callback needs to be the subsystem of the trace point, two dashes, and name of the event. Each sample, I said, uh, I said each sample has comes with the data, and the data will be provided uh, for callbacks with the arguments. For process events, you will just get the dictionary with the arguments. And this is the way to iterate them. For trace points, you will get the standard set of arguments. So like in this example, kmalloc and k3, you will get all, all the set of the arguments that are defined for, the, for this particular trace points. So this is, this is something uh, what perf script command allows you to do, but it is not the only thing it can actually do. Uh, there's a lot more. For example, it comes with some predefined scripts uh, that are some kind, sometimes very handy. Uh, it also allows you to monitor the data in the real time, so it does for you automatically the record phase and the report phase. So it's kind of it's kind of very uh, well. There's much more, and it has a very nice one page, so you're encouraged to read it. So this was the post-processing of the data from the profiling. So you can define your own uh, script in per on, on Python and do whatever you want uh, with the callbacks. 
And we offer somehow similar way for uh, counting interface. Uh, so whatever comes of per start, we are able to somehow post-process. And what are we actually interested in post-processing with the per start? With the per start, you will get the total number for the event and the workload, which is nice, which is most what most people want. But sometimes it's very useful to get those numbers and run some formula over those numbers, some calculation, and display the result of this calculation. And this is what we're trying to, trying to do in here. So as for this example, you have the cycles and the instructions, but it's, it's like hardware events for the CPU cycles and instructions that got executed during the workload. But you are also interested in the ratio, like cycle per, per instructions ratio. And so this is what we are trying to uh, achieve here. Uh, we defined our native perf language to actually do this, to let user to specify calculation like this. And to follow on this example, this was made by uh, following script. You define the formula name, you define the events which you want to measure, and you define the calculations that you want to do with those numbers. There can be many calculations and you can use some I think at least the basic arithmetic should be there at the moment. And at the end, you just say whatever calculation are you interested in, print it out, and this will be the calculation that will appear at the end of the perf start. So if you run perf start dash f uh, the formula script and dash e formula dash and the name of the formula, it will measure the cycles, instructions, take those number, run the formula, CPI uh, through those numbers and print it back uh, to the user. As easy as, as this. This is actually something which is not yet available in the perf. Uh, it's kind of under testing right now. There were some people interested in this but lost the focus. So you can get this code out of this uh, git tree. And yeah, that's the, that's the git tree with the branch. And yeah, we need some more testing and more users of this feature to actually be able to merge it in or to make some other progress. So basically, this is it for me. I will pass to Arnaldo and we decided to leave questions after the both talk. So hi, I, my name is Arnaldo Mello. I uh, work uh, for Red Hat and I maintain upstream the tooling side of Perf. And uh, now I'm, I'm going to try to quickly, real, real quickly, talk about uh, new developments and, uh, and two other comments. He talked about Perf script and uh, scripting support and I'm going to talk about the probe and trace uh, at, uh, tools, which are subcommands for for Perf, which are alternative to existing tools, but they have uh, new features because they are using some relatively new uh, kernel infrastructure, like uh, the Perf events infrastructure, the F-trace, K-probes, U-probes, and there is even more coming, like eBPF, where you're gonna be able to do in-kernel aggregation using uh, uh, code that was compiled by uh, CLang and uh, use it in a really optim optimal way. It's, this is something that's happening uh, these days. Uh, over over the, 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 this presentation, I'll try to talk about some of the strengths of these new tools, some limitations, missing features. This is current work that's happening now. So that there is uh, a lot of things that, uh, some, of, some bugs that I'm gonna show, but it's interesting to see the kind of potential that uh, uh, these new infrastructures have in providing alternatives to the ex existing tools that people are already familiar with. So I'm gonna be using two output examples and uh, I will try to use non-hoot user as, as much as possible because uh, most of the time this was developed initially for kernel developers who are using the root uh, uh, user is not a problem, but 
as this goes from the, the kernel development community to the user space and then to administrators, it needs to, to use as, uh, as uh, not use uh, hood uh, uh, permissions. So Trace. Trace started as, a, as, as an attempt to uh, uh, mimic what is the basic operation of S-Trace. So uh, uh, using these new interfaces, it, uh, it will not use ptrace, which is r really heavy. Uh, it's an old interface, which uh, it served, uh, served as well. But now we can, we can get most of what we want from a, a S-Trace-like tool using these new inter uh, uh, interface, uh, subsystems in the kernel. It, it will not stop the target. Um, it has, has a S-Trace, a, a Cisco argument predifier. And you can have more targets. The targets that you have on the other uh, perf tools, you can uh, target. You can do an S trace that is system wide, or just for one CPU, or just for one C group, or just for uh, a workload, the, 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 uh, a thread and its children. And uh, you can as well as with the other tools, like UG uh, has uh, demonstrated, uh, you can. Um, use a record report workflow. You can collect the samples, and then later on, or in another machine of a different architecture, you go on and do the post-processing analysis. Uh, and uh, while with S-Trace and the equivalent first trace you can do it live. You, uh, as the events are being processed, you are uh, showing it to the user uh, in some way. So. Uh, for, for demonstrating the S-Trace overhead, there, there is a guy who wrote several books on, on profiling, uh, Brendan Gregg, who uh, did a lot of, of stuff in the, in the D-Trace camp, and now he's is looking at what Linux has. And so he has one uh, example where he already mentions PerfTrace, and he uses DD as, uh, to measure the overhead of S-Trace. So uh, using uh, the, this, this command, which basically copies from uh, a known uh, disk back, back at, uh, file, dev0, and, and just throw it away, uh, dev new, one byte, 500 times. Uh, uh, the measurement is done by the DD itself, so it says 0 0.18 seconds. If you go to S trace and uh, you say S trace, and I'm only interested in the accept syscall, which is not used by, by the, the comment, it has a point. Uh, it gonna, it's measuring just the overhead for, for the S-trace operation, because for S-trace to, to do the, the, its work, it has to use P-trace, and P-trace will uh, transfer control to it for every syscall that's made, even the ones that we're not measuring. So it, it gets 173 times slower. That, that's in my measurement. But uh, in the Brendan Gregg me, uh, article, he mentions uh, some, some older kernel, 442 times is lower. So uh, it's, I mean, you can use it to some degree to do some analysis, but uh, in uh, a, a production environment, it's not so, not so nice to, to, to have this kind of slowdown. So uh, because P-Trace pauses the application twice at Cisco enter and exit, and uh, it will emit several other uh, Cisco's to, um, to, uh, to read information from the kernel and format the, the things. So uh, the, the, this is the article where this uh, discussion happened. And if you do it with trace, you're going to be 14 times lower uh, at, the current, at the current state. So uh, again, uh, uh, because it, it will not have a stop at Cisco enter and exit. It will, when you get into the Cisco, we just put into that uh, buffer that uh, you mentioned. And, uh, and, go, and goes uh, to do whatever it does. It will not stop the, the process and transfer control to the monitoring uh, uh, tool. Further optimizations are, are, are possible because it currently uses the raw syscall sys enter and exit trace points that for each uh, syscall will report this in the buffer. So it's possible that we can use another, another uh, trace point, which is syscall sys enter exit accept. And then only when accept happens, we're going to have something in the buffer. So this 14 times as lower can go down to two times lower or, or even less. Um, permissions. Uh, uh, this uh, uses several uh, facilities in the kernel so that there are lots of permissions involved. 
uh, uh, mechanisms usually involve how you mount the bug FS. This is something that is in flux now. People are doing uh, stuff to remove those trace point descriptions from uh, the bug FS into a trace FS. So, uh, this is uh, changing now. And then there we have some ProcFS uh, knobs. And uh, of the, the, the three, but the last one is the most interesting, the Pref Event Paranoid, like, like we're going to see. If you, if you try to do a Pref Top, which is another tool uh, in syswide mode, while you are, no, uh, you are not the administrator, it will tell this, this thing to you. You may have not permission, you have to set that knob with one of those values. So these are going to be uh, show, uh, the, the trace tool. Uh, for, uh, the trace tool will look at this, th those things and try to help the user into getting the permissions that it, it, it needs, J just the, the minimal uh, set of permissions. So uh, I was uh, getting a, a kernel tree from a co-worker, uh, Clark Williams, and now I wanted to, to know what was happening on that uh, 3330 uh, PID. So I say trace uh, that PID, which is something that you do with, with uh, S-trace quite uh, commonly. So uh, a running a thread, you go there and, and ask for, for the thing. Um, it, it say, oh, I cannot find the bug FS. You, you can try this, and if you try this, you can try again. And when it tries again, say, oh, I cannot read. The, the bug FS is mounted now, but, but I cannot read it. So you, you, you please remount it to give me the permission to, to, to get there. Uh, and, and when you do that and you run trace dash p, uh, you're going to see the, the S trace like output uh, with, with uh, the timestamp and uh, since the workload started, and then the time it took for that syscall to, to, to be processed by the kernel. And uh, with the, it looks for somehow there are two algorithms for it to map the, the FD, the file descriptor, to, to what is this file descriptor. In this case, it's a socket. Um, and if I try to do uh, system-wide tracing as a non-root user, which is dangerous, you should do it, but you can do it. If you are not paranoid at all, you go and say, remember that uh, uh, minus one is not paranoid. You, 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 you get to the user all that he, it wants. And when you do that, you get system-wide tracing. Um, there are some problems with that. We have to filter out trace itself, which is not, not done in this, product, in this code, current code. It's possible to do that. It's something that I will do soon. Um, and then you, you see that when you have more than one thread, you're going to see what is the thread, QPID, 3A2, the name of the thread, and then the PID. And you're going to see that when there are multiple syscalls uh, from different ones, it will notice and use that thing that S trace has, which is the, the saying that uh, the nano sleep was continued. Finally, you got out of the nano sleep, you, you entered, and then something else happened, those things. And then the, you, you can see more examples of the, the beautifiers that, that we have for, for these two. Uh, you can, uh, this is something recent. Um, the, several people are asking me to uh, make it possible for you to have all the trace points, no, not just the syscall trace points, but all the trace points intermix it with the S trace like output. So it's just implemented, there are some bugs, but uh, with it you can do something like this. You can say a trace dash dash event, and then you say some events, like uh, the scheduler events for when a process is executed, when the process is switched away, and the process exits. And then the workload, which is a simple one, it's a slip one, and then I, I remove some stuff, but then you see that the first thing that happens is the, uh, executing the process. The file name is usr slash bin slash slip, the PID, and then at some point, the, and there is the bug, uh, you do a nano slip, and because of the nano slip, there will be a sketch switch. So this line with nano slip should be broken down into two, and that uh, sketch switch should be put in the middle. Because the, 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 the sketch switch happened because of this syscall. The, 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 slip went to sli uh, the, the slip tool went to slip, and then it was switched away. And uh, it does some, some other stuff, and then at the end, there is this um, uh, trace point for a sketch pr process exit. So you can, you can mix and match. 
And uh, another thing that's interesting with this is that you can uh, remove this, the, the, the asterisk-like formatted, um, formatted uh, uh, syscalls. Uh, 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 and you can use these as a way to enable trace points in an asterisk-like way. You don't have to. It's, this is an alternative to the method of using ftrace in the kernel, which is to go to some files and set up what you want, and then look at the other file, and etc. And then set a filter for this specific process or for that other thing. So you have to manipulate several things to then start tracing and then get what you want. With this, you can more compactly, even using wildcards, you can say uh, these, these, these trace points, and that's the workload. We start the workload, and just the events that happen while this workload is, is running, are going to be shown. And, and uh, if you use another comment, which is perf list, you can see that there are thousands of uh, uh, trace points already in the kernel. Uh, so uh, record, report workflow. So it's similar to perf uh, record and report. And we can collect in one machine, analyze in another, needs better air handling like the live mode has. Uh, running as no root root has several uh, issues, and I was not able to fix in time for DevCon. <laughs> so if you say trace record is with use lip, what you're saying is run the workload and don't show anything to me, just drop it in a file, just like you do with perf record. And, uh, but it, it it didn't, I'm trying as a known root user, so it, the message was not so good because the person who implemented this was, uh, uh, for his needs were just for running as, as root, uh, while the person who implemented the other was trying to make it easier for, for the user. So I, I will uh, do what I did for the, the other mode to this mode so that uh, right now the way for you to know is to try it without the record and then you're gonna say what you have to do and after you do, it, it's gonna work. So argument beautifier similar to S trace, but some need more data collected in the kernel. Uh, you can use perf probe to collect those. So we switch to perf probe. Perf probe is another common that creates dynamic probes in arbitrary place. So you can, in user space or in the kernel space, you, you can ask it for, show me the source code, and then you're gonna say where you can put those, those, those probes, and you can insert probes, uh, I'm gonna show that. And uh, in user spaces, K probes, in user space, uh, U probes. Um, so if you do perf probe dash capital L, get name flags, you're gonna show you the, this function. That is on that file. If you have the bug info installed, that's where it gets the information it needs to, to do this. It matches the kernel that's running. And then you can see here, lots of places. I'm interested in, for this specific case, uh, in, uh, in line 65. Line 65 here is where I get this file name. It's where I can collect this file name uh, when this, this function runs. Why I want this function? Because with this function, uh, I, I, I insert it like that, and I say VFS get name, and then uh, what I want is path name that at that point is called file name, and this is a string. So after I do that, I can use it in all perf tools, uh, record, uh, tr trace, top, uh, or any, any it, it becomes a trace point. It's a new trace point that's a dynamic one that I just inserted in the kernel. And then if I do perf record dash E probe VFS get name, I use it, this new trace point, and I say touch my name, fi uh, uh, my file name, and I run perf script just to show me the events that were collected while that workload, which is just touch, it says that there were several files that were, that the, the kernel, uh, that, that were, that passed through that probe in the kernel. And uh, exactly the files of the, uh, the, the, the uh, dynamic loader that's loading the system, loading the, the application, and the file that I just touched. Um, we go back to Trace because we, Trace uses this VFS get name. It's, it wants to map a file descriptor to a file name, to a path name. Uh, so this is a way for you to get what we, I call one of the trace points. Uh, I, I want to have a trace point there, but I have not convinced uh, upstream developers that there should be a trace point there. So uh, I, I, I can insert it dynamically, and uh, using that format, uh, via, I, I give it a name, VFS get name, that it will never change. 
So if over time a new version of the kernel comes along and uh, that thing changed places, and it, this happened for this specific uh, example, you can then uh, change that and uh, your tool will not have to, to change. And in the future, when you convince that this tool is so cool, it's so interesting, it provides value, then you can uh, convince kernel developers with the tool that uses this uh, trace point that they are proposing. So that's uh, uh, one possible use. So trace using VFS get name. When you do trace dash E, just like in, in S trace, for those syscalls and then running in touch, and I do grab my, uh, I see that it, it, uh, the, this trace point was activated, that that data was collected into the perf data buffer, and the tool used it. Uh, it needs more help from probe uh, when copying syscall arguments from the space to the kernel. Um, I mean, there are other things that uh, I want to show, like uh, uh, data structures for some specific system calls that I need to, when the kernel is copying from user space, I pick it back at the end and uh, as a way to reduce the impact that this has on the profiling, uh, the, the tracing experience, and, and insert this in the, in the buffer. Uh, but there, there are several questions still to answer. How to sign on, how much to copy, uh, do I have to automatically create the probes when those trace points are not available so that I can use this tool on older kernels without the trace points using perf probe or in new kernels uh, where the trace point is there, uh, possibly. Uh, probe, probe integration with other tools. Uh, probes are just trace points. Other features are present. Call chains, for, in, for instance. You can do scripting as well with the, those probes that you inserted there, processing those variables as non-interactive debugging, uh, as an example. So if you, uh, this one, the life of a pink packet. I use it again, perf probe dash L, and I look at the ICMP RCV, which is the routine in the kernel that's called when a, a pink packet arrives at the machine. So I look at there and I look at where there is a processing for broadcast packages, which is line 51, or around there. So I insert at line 59, and um, I can use now, and then I, the perf record dash e that, that probe that I inserted, and uh, I ask furthermore that uh, call chains are collected in a way that I can process in user space as well, not just in the kernel, and without requiring frame pointers. And uh, I run it, and then it collected uh, two samples, well, two packets, two times it, it was processed there. And uh, if I do a perf report now, I can see the backtrace all the way to the to the ping, ping, and then uh, it goes to lib libc, then it crosses into the kernel and goes all the way to that route in there. So I can go from the kernel, from a dynamically inserted probe, uh, go uh, uh, to the call chain all the way to, to user space. <coughs> this is something that uh, was re recently uh, uh, made possible. There were some bugs. And if you want to do scripting with this, uh, something that uh, he didn't say, the perf data file, uh, you can use perf script dash g python, and it will uh, generate a, a skeleton that will help you to start writing this post-processing script. Then there are more stuff that I, I, I could show, like uh, in user space doing the same thing, for looking for mayloc, and then uh, looking for some specific workload. Uh, who is calling mayloc? So this is an example for user space, but we are running completely out of time, so uh, thank you. So we have two minutes for questions. Uh, I saw that in some examples from the trace tool, the file descriptors were annotated by the type of the, of the socket or of the descriptor. So how is, how is that done? I mean, uh, uh, when you, uh, uh, if you don't have that VFS get name, uh, and, and even for socket, you, you don't get that VFS get name because there is no copying from user space to kernel space of the path name. There is a socket. So what it does, it's on demand, it reads from slash proc, which is racy, but it's the only way that we can do it. But it, it doesn't read all the things in slash proc. It tries to, to read just when that thing appears in the trace. Someone else? Is the new uh, trace 
To some degree. Uh, uh, the, the question was, uh, is it in, in Enterprise Linux 7? I mean, to some degree, uh, he is the one doing the backport for... for Yeah, the perf trace is now in RAR7 for sure, RAR6 maybe from 6.6, 6, maybe 6.7, but it's there. Yeah. Someone else? I have one minute. <laughs> right, that, that's an excellent question. Yeah. Yeah. No one knows really what's happening. Yeah. Right. Right. Is there any option to get first of all the larger picture? I mean, uh, the, there are other tools that were not mentioned here. Uh, one of them is PerfTop, let's say. And then with PerfTop, you, you will, by default, looking at where cycles are being spent, which is, for, for some workloads, it's not that interesting. But for some, it, it's interesting. So, yeah, I mean, uh, having a tool that uh, will try to do all those things, it's not there yet. Yeah, you had to reduce the frequency of sampling sometimes, etc. So, yeah, I mean, um, it's, 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 it's something that, uh, to, to my extent, to my knowledge, uh, there, is, there, there was no people working on that. It's, it's more like, yeah, you, you can see with PerfTop to some degree, and then you can look at what are the events that are available, and some may look for you interesting, and, but no. I mean, if, if you think it's scheduler related, then you can ask just for the scheduler trace points. And then, and then if you think it's, it's block layer, or, uh, and you can ask for those to be added as well. So, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a completely integrated tool that goes from a, a, a per process view, and you click down, and then it goes uh, to per DSO view, and then from there you click down, and you go by symbol, and from there you go to annotation, perhaps. No, all of those pieces are there, but uh, not one super tool that uh, goes from one to the other. You, you need some training with the tools yet to. There, there, there are some tutorials, but there is no the, the, the super tool. No, we are. It's, it's like a, in Git. We try. We tried first to do the basics, the, the infrastructure, and the kernel. Then tools that allows some people to uh, validate that that interface works. And then uh, we are getting more porcelain, uh, more 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 things on top of this to try to help into getting closer to to the zeal, which is uh, uh, would be the ultimate goal. But uh, first we need, okay, all the time.